Hello, this is Scott from Aquatic Growers, and I'm going to show you how I designed and built my sand and gravel filter for my aquaponic system. First, uh, a few precautions I want to mention about the aquaponic sy systems. When you design and build them, you want to try to make all of your products as inert and friendly to the environment as possible. You want to really, really minimize how many products you have that could potentially leach any toxins in your system. After all, you could be feeding people, including yourself, with uh, all the products that you're growing. So all of the pieces I have used here are high-density polyethylene. That's what the tank is made of. And then all of the fittings are Schedule 40 PVC. With the exception of that brass air inlet, which will not be underwater. And I have a three quarter inch gate valve and brass through hole fitting in the bottom. In my location, large PVC piping can be difficult to come by just because it is not allowed in the building trades in this area. Therefore, you will have a difficult time finding it in stores like Lowe's and Home Depot. You may have to go to a plumbing supply store to find it and it just makes trying to source it all the pieces a little more challenging in this area. So plan the design of your system before you actually start looking for all the products. I'll show you a few things about how I have built my system. There's many different designs, but there's two basic elements that are required. You need a set of pipes to send the filthy water into the system and you need a smaller set of piping to send the air into the system. I prefer to have my system with about a four or five inch gravel free zone in the bottom. Above that is a screen which is what this large gray PVC mesh is. And so that mesh will be sitting on top of those four three inch rings and the C shape or U shape, depending on how you're watching the video, pipe around the perimeter. That inch and a half pipe is my dirty water coming in from my system. In the base or the underside of that inch and a half inch pipe, there are holes drilled, large holes, to allow the dirty water to go down whatever side of the pipe it chooses. They are supported by 90s on the ends of the pipe and then there are shims under the middle and the wings of it. Let me see if I can show you. The shims are just cut to whatever height was determined by the base of the tank because the base of the tank is not flat and then I just drilled holes in them and tie strapped them. At the back you'll find some other shims that are in place under that center support just because of the tank being a different depth at that point. The small white three quarter inch PVC is all glued, very similar to the inch and a half. It has a different purpose to be glued. The inch and a half I glued for strength and support, the three quarter inch I have glued because it's going to be the air lines. That is why there are one eighth holes drilled in the top of them. The purpose for the rings, or for the three inch off cuttings is what they are really, was to support the rest of my screen. I've seen some people use milk crates, other people have just designed a different webbing of pipes to support. You got to keep in mind this needs to support the weight of the gravel which could be up to 300 pounds. I have tested the weight of this just by myself standing on it. I'm potentially two thirds of the weight of the gravel and it didn't flex or move. I do have a fifth piece of PVC in my hand just to show you what I've done. So I took my hole saw, drilled holes in the bottom edges of this for two reasons. One, to go over top of the three quarter inch pipe and the other to allow the muck and the waste to move freely underneath, especially when the air is being purged in the system. I have two main outlets. This is the waste outlet. I've designed it so I can put a bucket underneath 
or I can use my inch and a half fire hose depending on how much volume of water I want to get rid of. And the other outlet is a inch and a half through haul where the clean water will be going out to the fish tank. On the back side, it's just a six inch threaded nipple. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to come back and show you this all put together. All right, here's the system put together. There's a few extra pieces involved that I didn't show you previously. Hopefully there's not too much glare at the very base and you're able to see the five three inch PVC rings and the C-shaped perimeter, which is the inlet water or the dirty water. That is what it all looks like. It's really quite straightforward. Below that is hopefully all the large muck is going to stay there. Let's go back up here and I'll explain the air intakes. So as I mentioned at the beginning, this brass fitting at the end is for my air intake. I will be using a air compressor to blow the air into the system. You can use a shot back. You can also use leaf blower, anything that's going to push enough air for you to clean all of the muck out of the gravel. The reason I have a ball valve on it is just so I can shut it off. If I get the system purged really, really well, and I want to, instead of turning the air compressor off, just keep the pressure in there for a short period of time, I can always shut this off. Or I can open it up. It also allows me with the threading, if I choose to do a shop back system instead, I can just unthread that ball valve and just put a larger fitting on the end. My aquaponic system uses a small pressure, small volume water pump. This hole here will be the inlet for my braided water line onto a stainless steel fitting to a T and that water will be going down the large pipe which we've already discussed and distributed through the base. Some people might be asking why I have a ball valve and a 90 on the end and I got thinking if the power ever fails or the pump ever fails the pump has the potential to siphon all the dirty water out of the base of this and then back out to my aquaponic troughs. So if I put this ball valve on and have a slow trickle of water coming out that 90 on the end, what will happen is if the water or if the electricity is shut off by accident, the pump will suck the air from this before it will suck the water out of the tank. Therefore, I do not have all this filthy water going back into my system. It's kind of a cheap man's uh, anti-siphoning valve. This great pipe here, as I said, is just the outlet. I didn't have it in place on the last shot on the camera, but this way I can regulate the height of the water after it's filtered to whatever I determine. When it comes to laying your gravel in here, there's many different ways and variations to do it. Principle is very simple. You want to start off with the largest aggregate on the bottom and work your way up to the smallest on the top. How you do that could depend on the size of the particulate that you're trying to get rid of. I'm going to start with probably golf ball size river rock, maybe go up to three quarter inch clear crush and then pea gravel on top. I'm going to leave enough room that if I have to I can put about two inches of sand in there but I just want to try those first three aggregates and see how they polish the water. The biggest thing I need to stress about your aggregates if this is for an aquaponic system is you need to use aggregates that will not change the pH of your water. In that case you're probably going to go with a granite base type of aggregate. You want to avoid limestone or anything that is easily dissolved in the water. So I have a small flower pot of aggregates that I'm going to need to be washed. But that is the type of aggregate that I'll be using on the very bottom. If you really want, you can go to an aquarium store and they have lovely polished rocks already there for you. But you'll be paying a lot more money for that than if you were to go to your local quarry and ask them for some product. Hopefully the next video I show you, this is going to be up and operational. The functionality of it is really quite simple. All this does is send the dirty water to the base and as the water comes up through the larger aggregate 
and progressively smaller, it will start to filter out all of that dirty water and what you're left with at the top is clean water. Once the gravel becomes too dirty, you're going to purge the system with air. Put your air compressor or whatever device you have on here. Send the air into the base. It will then agitate and percolate all the dirt off the gravel. It will float up to the top in your six or eight inches of water at the top. Before you put the air in here, shut off your outlet so all that water doesn't go into your fish tank and open up your waste. As that dirty water is accumulating, it should be going out your waste side. You may have your water pump still on, depending how you want to manipulate the system. You can also do it with the water pump off. It depends how you want to do it. Once you're finished with your cleaning, put your cap back on your waist, let the water go with your fish or out the outlet to your fish tank, and you're back and running. How long you might be able to run your system before you have to do it again depends on the bio load in your system and how dirty your water was when you first started. Next video is going to be me showing you guys how it's actually functional in the system. Thanks for listening.